Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Tell the world that Jesus is the way. The Lord is soon returning. There is no time for losing. So be Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children. I know you're excited over these lessons about Hamed and Kinza and how the Lord has blessed with these children to care for them. And he will do the same thing for us. But we must not harden our hearts, as God's Word says. So today, God's Word says in Hebrews 1. Now, Hebrews teaches us that the blood washes away our sins. We cannot be saved apart from the blood of Jesus Christ. And he hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. And we become an heir of God when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. We also become saints of God. So he tells us in verse 3, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of God. And then we go to chapter 3, verse 15. While it said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. He says also the same thing in verse 4, 7. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Because God's word plainly teaches in John chapter 3, verse 33, 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, as we start out this lesson today, I know that many of you know that you do not want the wrath of God to abide on you. This would be a terrible thing. So you can receive the Lord Jesus because all of us are under condemnation. This means that we're separated. Our sins have separated us from God. But John 3.18 gives us a wonderful hope. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Every person in the world is condemned to die because sin brings death. And when I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, I have eternal life. I become an heir of God and he prays night and day for me and we have divine protection. We're protected by his blood and the spirit of God that dwells within us will teach us his word. If you cannot understand this book, it's because you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior or you do not ask for wisdom because God's word says that if you lack wisdom, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally. We have not because we ask not. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee for the wonderful resources that we have in this book. We pray for believers today not to live in poverty, but to live in the riches of the glory of heaven, that we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Help us to have a hunger for thy word and a thirst for righteousness. Rebuke this awful enemy. May these words pierce our hearts today and show us that we need to confess our sins and thou art faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
that we may see the power of God manifested in the lives of each believer today, that others may see Christ in us, and that thou will be glorified. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. So as we come to this lesson today and we talk about the wonderful provision God has given to us, and yet we are very poor according to all the resources that God has given to us. As we get up in the morning, as we lie down at night, we can thank God for the day that he's given to us. We can thank him for the morning because every good and perfect gift cometh from the Father. Everything we have belongs to him. So why should we not want to serve someone that has everything and owns all that's in heaven and all that's on the earth? All the silver and the gold is his, so that means it's mine also. And I can rejoice that he's promised to do everything that his word has told us to do. If you as a believer today ask God, He's going to do what you ask because he wants his will to be done. And that is according to his will and not ours. It's just like with their Ten Commandments. They are for us today. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and thy neighbor as thyself. We all fail in this, don't we? Well, God's word says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, what God do do I have in my life that keeps me from studying his word and learning all of these truths that he has? Because we're to meditate on his word day and night. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Worship anything but the true and living God. And if this first one is obeyed, all of these others fall in line as a matter of course. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, and the Jews still worship on the Sabbath day, and honor thy father and thy mother. So we have all of these that God has for us, and we are to obey them and live according to the principles he's laid down for us. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Every time I tell a lie, I obey Satan, my enemy. Thou shalt not covet. So, as we see each of these today, and we think about what God's Word has for us, He says in Psalm 27, 1. Now, I just, all of you that are listening, let's get into these Psalms and see all that He has. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I have the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So here I have the word of God to keep me, to give me the strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So if you have his joy, that's your strength today. So we saw how this little boy, as we have learned, Hamed. And there's millions of children today out in this world that's being treated, beaten, being treated just like Hamid and his little sister, even willing to sell his little sister. But there are children today that are being mistreated much worse. We must pray for those children. We must get the word of God out to their parents and their grandchildren and those that are keeping these children, adopted mothers and fathers that love these precious ones, foster children. You can teach them these truths and regardless of how bad they're treated, it's just like Hamid. He found the lo love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jenny, the rich little girl that had everything, you see, she needed Christ also. Every person that is listening. And now her stepfather has taken her back. And this missionary nurse knows that she will be mistreated. And she's willing to go and to bring her back where she will be loved and cared for. And those of you that are listening today, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you will love those children that are being mistreated all over the world. And we will get this word to them in whatever way God calls us to. And we will be obedient to do what he says 
and we will see the power of God manifested in our lives when we obey his word. Obedience is the secret to joy. So as he was going to get his little sister, as we saw last week, he got in this big fine car and just think about him riding in this car for the first time he had ever been in a car. Big, fine, rich car. But you know, he wasn't concerned and he wasn't happy that he was in this big, fine car. He was concerned about his little sister and the beatings that he was going to get from his stepfather if he saw him. The ant, after dark, he showed them where his house was. They knocked on the door and went in. And she said, your son brought your daughter to our, my home seven months ago. They have been away from their mother for seven months. And I have come to take her back. I will give more money for her than the beggar would give. Oh, he said, it is true. M my son took our daughter away seven months ago, but I haven't seen her or heard from her. If I hear anything, I will let you know. Now remember, they only had one room. And when this little Kinza heard the voice of this one that she loved so well, she came out and the old wife was trying to hold her down. And she came out and came to this nurse and she picked her up and he started to take her away, the stepfather did. But Jenna's dad was a big man. He stepped between them. And they said, this is your daughter, and we will abide by what you do. But we will take her and care for her and pay the money. And just while all of this was going on, Hamid's mother knew he had to be outside. So she ran outside while all of this is going on, and she saw Hamid. She says, oh, Hamid, I'm so glad you were able to take Kinza to this kind nurse. Oh, he said, Mother, I have found the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. I found where you told me to go. I obeyed every word, and I have the Lord Jesus Christ living in my heart. And Mother, I can read. I can read the Bible. And Mother, Jesus Christ is alive in heaven today. And she says, oh, she said, go back and learn more so you can come and tell me, and I can be happy as you are. He said, I am going to go, and I will come back and tell you all that I learn. But she said, do try to keep Kinza away, because he will certainly try to steal her away again. Just then, the stepfather runs outside and they all got in the car as they started off and just as they were getting in the car he said my son you cannot have but my daughter you may have you know they were going to pay him money for her so he was willing to let her go but they sped off in the car and as they sped off Hamid looked back over his village and he said I must come back I must tell this whole village about the Lord Jesus Christ. His name has never been mentioned as far as I know. They got back home. When they got back home, the nurse one day was talking to Jenny and her father and mother before they were going back to England. And she said, we must talk to Hamid. And we will let her go if Hamid agrees, and if you, you will have enough money to send her to a school for the blind, but you must promise that you will also teach her about the Lord Jesus Christ. They asked Hamid, and Hamid agreed that she could go. And the day came when he waved by to his little sister, and he said, I will never see my little sister again. But you see, the one thing that he had, he had hope that he would see her in heaven. If you are listening today and you are losing a loved one, the only thing that you can do is to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ and you will see them again. Otherwise, you will never see them again. You must tell them this great news about Christ. 
that he is the answer. And after his little sister left with tears in his eyes, he knew this was the right thing, that she would be cared for, she would be loved, and she would learn about Christ. So after they left, the nurse wanted him to stay. They sat down and she looked at him and she said, Hamid, I would like for you to stay. You can stay with me and take Kinza's place. And he thought for a while, oh, how wonderful it is here. I learn about the Lord Jesus. I am treated good. I am loved. I have plenty of food to eat. And I know what it is not to have fear and not to be afraid. And I am not beaten by my stepfather. As he's thinking of all the wonderful things that he had with this wonderful nurse, he had never known such kindness and such love. He looked up at his wonderful friend and he said, I cannot stay here and know that all of my friends and my mother are dying without Christ. I must go back to my village and give them the word of God. She said, Hamid, now I know that you love the Lord Jesus because you want others to be saved. That's why I left my family to come here to tell you about him. The day came when it was time for him to leave. With joy in his heart, he left, and he had never thought about the nurse leaving her family. He had left his family to save Kinza. Now he's going back home to save all of those in the village. This wonderful story is a true story, and those people that wrote this true story wanted all of you that are listening. When little Kinza left to go with Jenny and her mother and her father, she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Little Hamid went back to his village. When he was in his 50s, Hamid was still telling others about Christ. He went back and he told his mother about the Lord Jesus. And you know, we do not know what happened with his stepfather and the old wife. But to a little boy that was 11 years old that was faithful to go home, even though the beatings were there, we're sure that his stepfather and the old wife received Christ. Because from 11 years old till he was in his 50s, he was giving out God's word to all that would listen. As we have told you this story, we want you to know that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, spared not his own son. Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? As we go to the Bible to tell a story about Elijah, Elijah was a prophet of God. We find this story out. Those of you that want to follow along with this, this is a true story from God's Word. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1, Elijah was a prophet of God. He came into the palace of Ahab. He said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain upon the earth, but according to God's word. Ahab had married a wicked lady called Jezebel. Jezebel worshipped a god called Baal. She had 450 prophets, and God had told Ahab, he had told the kings of Israel not to marry anyone outside of Israel because they worshipped 
idols. You are not to marry an unsaved person. This is all through the Bible. When he married Jezebel, she brought all of these idols in and Israel and Ahab all over the nation of Israel. They began to turn from God to idols. And this is a sad thing because they had always known the true and living God. So God's word said the word of God came. He walked in the palace and then just walked away. But the word of God came to him, told him to go to the brook. And when he would go to this brook, that the ravens would feed him. Now, you know, he went according to the word of God. When you obey the word of God, you will be fed. You will be blessed. And God's word says, for I have commanded the raisins to feed thee there. And he went according at, to the word of God, and they fed him until the brook dried up. And then he, after the brook dried up, he's here waiting, and it hasn't rained now. He says for three years, and God had warned them, those of you that need this Bible verse in Deuteronomy 11, 16, and 17, he had warned them that this would happen. And this is what happened because they disobeyed. God sent a famine into the land and because of their idolatry. And then a woman fed him. A Gentile woman fed him. And because she fed Elijah the prophet, God gave her oil and meal until the famine was over. Each one of these times, it's according to the word of God. After three years... Ahab had looked for him every place, trying to find him to kill him. He was going to kill him because of the famine. He was blaming Elijah. He didn't see that he was sinning. So after three years, God's word says that he told Elijah, God says, at the word of the Lord, go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain. So he came and he told Ahab, and he says, why are you troubling Israel? He said, I'm not troubling Israel, but thou art, because you have turned from the commandments of God and have brought in idolatry. You have 450 prophets and you are worshiping Baal. So he says, how long are you going to halt between opinions? He says, either you worship God or you worship idols. So he got all the people together and told them what they were doing. And he said, you put up your idol to Baal, 450 prophets and 400 that ate at Jezebel's table. He said, you put up your idol. And if the God that answers by fire is the true and living God, they put up their idol. They, kept, they even cut themselves thinking that the God was going to please them. By noon, Elijah said, maybe he's on a journey. Maybe he's sleeping. And they, no fire came down because this was an idol. So after they put their idol up, they cried out to Baal, Oh, Baal, hear us. An idol, thinking an idol can hear. God's word says they have ears but can't hear and eyes but can't see. So according to the word of God, he put up the 12 stones for the 12 tribes of Israel, he put the wood on the fire and he put the lamb. They were to put the bullock, each one of them. Then he went, sat down to the brook and got 12 barrels of water and poured water on top of all of this. And there was a trench around and it was filled with water. And he fell down and called upon the true and living God to show them who the true and living God was. And he said that I am thy servant and that I have done all of these things at thy word. Now he says, hear me, hear me, O Lord, and let these people turn from their God to thee that have turned their back. They've turned their back upon thee. As soon as he obeyed the Lord, God sent fire down from heaven 
and consumed the whole altar, the bullock, the wood, the stones, and even the dust and the water that was there. The people began to cry to God. They fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And what did they do? They took all the prophets of Baal and killed all of the prophets. God says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not take unto thee any graven image, make anything. What keeps us from studying the Word of God? And do you know what? He told Ahab to leave down off of, this was Mount Carmel, and he said, Go, because I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And he, not only did he, was a, pra a man of prayer, but he prayed, and he prayed, and he sent his servant out to look, to see. But he continued to pray until the servant came back. He sent him seven times. All the times he sent him, he kept praying to God. God had said, I'm going to send water. But he must pray to God to believe this. We must pray for our nation. And the seventh time he came back and he said he saw a cloud about the size of his hand. And the rains came down just like God had told him to go. You see, all of you that are listening, he is the all-powerful God. He's the one that sends the rain. He's the one that sends famine. He's the one that brings the sunshine. He holds this earth upon nothing, and he knows all the stars and calls them all by name. Let's praise him and worship him today because he is the first and the last. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the only one that can give us life. I pray that through this story, every person that is listening will see the true and living God and that we will have a greater desire to obey this truth and turn from the gods of this world that cannot offer us anything. God freely gives us all. What do we give him? Is up to you.